Giagadich, and welcome. Thank you very much for tuning back in and joining us. Uh, once again, my name is Jay Hodges. I'm a proud friend of Sinn Féin's. Uh, we're going to have a great conversation today. It's something I'm uh, excited about. It's something I'm excited to learn about. Um, we're going to be talking with James Connolly Heron about Moore Street Preservation Trust and kind of what's going on in Moore Street in Dublin. Uh, so without further ado, let me introduce James. James, how are you doing, sir? Hello, Jay. Easter rising greetings to everybody. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to join us. Thank you for uh, for making yourself available. This is going to be a, a lot of fun. I'm, I'm very much looking forward to this conversation. Yeah, good. Um, now, before we get started about Moore Street, um, can we talk about you just for a, a brief second so people can kind of get to know you as a person? Um, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, tell us kind of where you're from. You know, well, I'm, I'm born and bred Dubliner from the north side of Dublin. Uh, very much connected to Moore Street in the sense that for Northside Dubliners, Moore Street was the centre of Dublin where one went on a Saturday for shopping, etc. So the connections would connections to Moore Street for Northside Dubliners have always been very strong. Um, Moore Street was uh, traditionally a trading street, a market street. Um, but what's not was was not generally known before our campaign began was it played a central role in the Easter Rising in 1916, where it became the last headquarters of the provisional government of the Irish Republic. Um, a lot of people would be familiar with the Michael Collins film by Neil Jordan, which depicted the rising ending at the GPO. So a lot, um, for most people, the story of Moore Street, the story of the evacuation from the GPO into the lanes of history in Moore Street wouldn't be widely known. So um, I became involved in the campaign to save Moore Street uh, a long 20 years ago now, um, when a local organization, the National Graves Association, signaled that the, the area was under threat of demolition to make way for a shopping development, a retail development, or shopping mall, I suppose, um, yeah. in American terms. So my, I became involved in the campaign. I thought originally it would last maybe a year or two, and 20 years later, we're still <laughs> campaigning. We're still campaigning to uh, to save the area for future generations. Now, let's talk about the Connolly legacy just very briefly. That's that's your family uh, yeah. and whatnot. And I, I feel like that kind of helps lay into the importance of the area just a little bit. So can you just talk briefly about James Connolly and kind of give for anybody who may know the name but may not know very much about him as a person, just kind of who he was the role he played in 1916. Um, and I feel like that kind of helps us develop the conversation for the significance. Yeah, of well, yeah, James Connolly, my great grandfather, I suppose an, is an iconic figure in Irish history, a labor leader, revolutionary, socialist, nationalist, um, joined forces uh, in 1916 with the nationalists as such. Um, he being the leader of a citizen's army, which is one of the first workers armies. So this was the great coming together in 1916 of the social movement, the national movement, and of course the feminist movement. Women played a, a leading role at the time in, in the rising as well. The women of Cumann Amman, First Woman's Army. So it was the great coming together of those three movements. And he was a pivotal figure in, I suppose, welding together in planning the rising. Um, he had had experience uh, the bitter experience of being a leader in the lockout, the labor, known as the labor war in 1913, only three years before the rising, when the workers went on strike against the Dublin tram companies owned by William Martin Murphy, a leading capitalist of the time. And a bitter, bitter uh, dispute arose out of the, the, the rights of workers to organize, etc. And um, the, the workers ultimately were battened off the streets. People died as a result of the, the lockout. And it went down an inf infamous moment in Irish history. But it led directly to the formation of a citizen's army or a workers' army to defend the rights of workers. And it's said that at the time of the rising, that it was Connolly who was pushing to, to actually commence the rising, that there was reticence on the part of the other leaders. But the fact that he had an army under his control gave him great weight in that, in, in that decision. And that ultimately the rising, you know, you could, one could argue the rising may never have happened had it not been for the existence of the citizen army. So the, out of that movement came our strike for freedom, 
um, the blow for freedom in, in 1916, the event in our history that led ultimately to our independence and freedom in this part of Ireland. Um, now, sorry, uh, go ahead, go ahead. I no, don't wanna, no, that's fine. Well, I, I wanted to talk about, so the, uh, he, he's a leader in the, in the 16 rising. Um, he is in the GPO um, and, you know, it, it's time for the evacuation to occur. Um, can you kind of lead us through, I, I don't think a lot of people understand um, uh, the charge that happened right beforehand or kind of, can you kind of explain how the evacuation took place? It's a, it's a part of history that I'm not certain that an American audience really has a lot of exposure. To. Yeah, well, the tactics, the tactics for, for the rising were to take or seize control of major buildings in the city and hold the city. And out of that, then the right, you know, the right, um, the people would rise up in other parts of the country. Ultimately, because of this, this disagreements among the leadership, that didn't happen. But Dublin rose, and the ma major buildings in Dublin were that were held. The major building that was held was the General Post Office, which was in the centre of the city, in in then Sackville Street, now O'Connell Street. So the headquarters, uh, the headquarters, the GPO became the headquarters for that week. Um, and then the street fighting took place in and around O'Connell Street and in outside areas as well. But the focus of attention really was on the GPO because that's where the leadership, you know, that's where the leadership were and the communi communications emanated from there. But by the end of the week, the British had decided to use artillery shell fire to free up the, the positions held by the rebels. And the GPO came under sustained attack and eventually the building went on fire and the volunteers were left with no option but to, to leave the building and evacuate into the, into the, they intended to continue by seizing another building in a street not too far away in Parnell Street, a building in Parnell Street, which was the Williams and Woods, a big jam factory in, in uh, Parnell Street. And the aim was to break through a British cordon to get to that building and continue on the struggle. That wasn't to happen. But the route for that was through Moor Street. And the, the first act of the evacuation was, was what's known as the O'Rahilly Charge, where the O'Rahilly led a group of 20 volunteers to break through the Brit a British barricade, a machine gun post at the top of Moor Street. And that, that charge was the first act of the evacuation. And they were met with heavy machine gun fire and the O'Rahilly fell wounded into a laneway and the other volunteers scattered into laneways uh, in and around the Parnell Street end of Moore Street. That was the first act of the evacuation. The other volunteers were warned not to take the same route for obvious reasons and they then filtered into the lanes of Moor Street through a place called Henry Place immediately opposite the side door of the general post office. So they went across the street under fire in batches of 20 volunteers and eventually the entire garrison of 300 volunteers ended up in the laneways opposite the GPO, what now we now term the lanes of history. And they seized buildings along the route of the evacuation and eventually ended up breaking into the terrace of houses. And that, that terrace of 16 houses then became their last headquarters. All, all 300 volunteers uh, ended up in that terrace of houses. The leaders eventually ended up in the centre of the terrace because that's the safest place you could be or you could hold out. And it became, I suppose, our Alamo, um, the last stand of the volunteers in 1916. It was, it's the last extant battlefield of 1916 that's left to us. Most other areas connected or directly linked to the rising have been changed over the years. And a lot of the buildings that were occupied and held by volunteers are no longer with us, they've been demolished. So this area was threatened in 1999, was threatened with complete and utter obliteration to make way for a shopping mall. And the campaign was started to save 16 Moor Street, which was the house where the decision to surrender was taken by the leaders. And that now has widened out, the campaign has widened out where we're now talking about saving the entire battlefield. So the uh, they leave the GPO and they make their way through alleys over to what is now Moore Street, and they um, like that's what what gets me is I and I 
I've said this before, I've been on Moore Street a thousand times and I, I never understood uh, very much about just kind of what the significance of, of Moore Street really is uh, from a historical perspective. Yeah. Uh, and so it, it's, it's interesting to me because it is a place that you can um, still go and physically like see and touch. And I mean, it, it's a, a, a living part of, of history as opposed to uh, well, something you can, you, you can, Yeah, you can follow the volunteers evacuation. You can step by step, building by building. You can relive you can relive that history in a very real way, in a physical way, in that you're walking on the cobblestones that they walked on. You're seeing what they saw. The Terrace of Houses is the great survivor of the Blitz in 1916. The, the Terrace stood, whereas most of the city was destroyed by the artillery shelling. So it's an extraordinary, it's extraordinary that it's still standing. And even though it's in a dilapidated state today and doesn't look great, you still get that sense if you walk through it. You get the sense of what it must have been like, especially as the darkness of an evening comes in. It's 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 uh, it's very it, it's a very physical sort of feeling or link to a, a, a huge event in our history. You actually can you know it's tangible as you walk through the lanes. But most people like yourself, Jay, yes, come to Dublin. They might visit Moore Street and they just would see it as a market street because that's all that has. That, that's how it is presented. And that's an important, it's an important aspect of Dublin's history, social history, that the market survives. But that's not the, that's not the whole story, you know, behind that. And, and one of the great achievements of the campaign is that this story has now been told because for generations of Dubliners, the story of the evacuation, the story of holding these houses in the name of the Republic and the final surrender from there, and the volunteers emerging out onto the street and marching in formation back around to the very to the very place where they were founded only three years later at the Rotunda Gardens this is an amazing and astonishing story that that had to be told. So at least the, the campaign has achieved that, that that people are now aware of this amazing story. Now, the proposal to um, to do new development on the site and to build a shopping mall or whatever it, you know whatever it is they want to do um, yeah. you're actually looking to counter it and uh, do a development that has more of a historical uh, yeah. perspective to it um, well, what, yeah, what is it's, well it's the difference between having a commercial approach to this site you know a strictly commercial approach with a nod towards its history or a, or a, a real conservation approach with a commercial element and, and we're for the latter, historical conservation approach. So we want to keep the area intact. We want to keep the geography of the streets intact as they were, so that you can tell the story without any difficulty. So you're not standing in McDonald's trying to explain that, <laughs> that it was the site of an ambush. Sure. You know, you're standing literally where these things happened. Um, the essential difference in, in this story is that unlike in the States where most battlefield sites would be green fields where battles took place. Here we have, you know, an urban battlefield. So you can actually touch history. You know, you can walk the streets. You can you can experience very nearly what what the what the volunteers experience in the sense of geography, your surroundings, etc. And um, what they saw you see today. Now, I've I've talked to you about this. Uh, battlefields in the states are such a part of our of our education. I, I can't tell you the number of battle sites that I visited either through school or because my family took a vacation and we saw Gettysburg or, I mean, you know, whatever yeah. it is, it's just a, it's so much a, a piece of us. I think that's something that most Americans would say that they grew up at least having been around, um, yeah. uh, at least in childhood, uh, if, if not in adulthood. So I think that's something that we all kind of get. Now, there was a, an introduction of a bill in the doll um, and I, I don't know very much more than the fact that there was a bill that was introduced. What, what's happened this week? Like, what's kind of the significance through that? Well, very significant from our point of view, because it's the first time there's been almost uh, general approval for, for, for a, a bill. That There have been a number of bills over the years, one presented by Sinn Féin before, another presented by the Fianna Fáil party, but both were defeated. Well, one was, was amended, but... but Basically, they weren't successful, but this one at least has met with the approval of all. So that's a sea change, or certainly it's a, it represents a shift. There's a lot of, I mean, there's a lot of road to be travelled yet, but at least we have agreement now that the area 
is worthy of special consideration. And that's, that's, a, that's a leap forward from our point of view. But the next step is the important step, is to have action, because words, you know, words are fine and the debate is necessary, but we do need action. And the great danger is that a planning, planning application may be made by the, by the developers in the meantime. And if that happens, the debate then will be stifled because the, the, we'll be told by the administration, well, we can't do anything while the planning process is in, while that process is ongoing. Yeah. So it's important that the, the bill that, that Sinn Féin successfully put placed before the Dáil yesterday, that action is taken now um, sooner rather than later. Now, I have a couple of questions and I'm going to ask them together, but I, I would ask that you kind of answer them separately. Um, first is um, kind of what is your most immediate need um, to keep the campaign for more street preservation kind of moving forward? And then the second one that kind of tags into that is what can we in the States do? Uh, and I'll include my Canadian brothers and sisters in this because I feel like this is a, a whole continent fight. So what can we in North America do then to aid you in that? effort? Well, signal support. It's so important from our point of view that this isn't seen to be just a Dublin uh, issue or a national issue. It's an international issue. I mean, our links to the states are so strong, obviously, because of the diaspora, but, but the links to 1916 um, are also, we're also very strong, you know, direct links. Uh, Tom Clark was a U.S. citizen. Dermot Lynch, a leader of the Rising, was a U.S. citizen. We had um, the Hibernian Rifles played a leading role in, in, in the evacuation. So the links with the, with the states are very strong. But I mean, at, at it's very simple, it's just show your support, you know. We need, we need support, we don't say no to any support. Support from at home and abroad is so important in relation to moving the debate forward. So obviously the most more support we have, the better. So a simple note to the minister, a simple letter of support to us is very, very useful. When I will be uh, making a call to my Hibernian brothers across the continent saying, please have your division send a, a, a letter of support. I think that's a very simple thing. And I think it's something that we can do. So I, I would be happy to push yeah. that forward um, and, and get that out there. Now, this is just a fun question because I, I love your historical knowledge of this. What is one thing about Moore Street that people don't know that you've always found kind of fascinating? What's just a favorite like thing about Moore Street? I, I, I'd be curious to know, given your uh, in-depth knowledge. Do you mean you mean from an historical point of view, or its place in Dublin, Dublin's sort of social history? Because it, it covers both. Well, I would say uh, dealer's choice on that one. I'd, I'd be curious as to uh, just from a historic perspective, but also from a social perspective. Yeah, yeah. Well, interestingly enough, the, the, if 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 you're if you're a tourist and you wander into Dublin city centre, you wouldn't know the importance of this area other than it's a market street. Apart from a small plaque, if you if you happen to notice a small plaque over number sixteen, which tells you here on the 29th of April, the provisional government of the Irish Republic agreed on surrender, agreed to surrender. Apart from that, you'd be oblivious to all of that history. You might even wander through the lanes and not realize what had happened there. So there is nothing to signal to you how important this is. And as time has gone by and as the story, as we learn more about the story of the evacuation, we realize that this is in fact, can be, can be described as the birthplace of the Republic or the cradle of the nation or whatever you want to term it, whatever term you wish to use, our Alamo, whatever. But it has to be given that recognition and because without that recognition, that official recognition, it won't be appreciated to the extent that it should be. So the crucial, the crucial way forward in all of this is that firstly, there must be a recognition for the importance of the area, and then we must present it, you know, in light of that importance. And it would be, I mean, we don't know, oh, there's, a, there's a question mark over the whole future in terms of tourism, et cetera, but even for citizens, it could become, this area could become a fantastic hub of activity, cultural, historical quarter, if you like, um, presenting not only the history of the past to people, but creating a glimpse to the, into the future. So it's, it, there are all sorts of possi possibilities. Um, 
and it, it represents an opportunity that probably, you know, unless it's handled properly, uh, it, the opportunity to do the right thing will not come back again. So it's a, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity to do the right thing. And, and that's why it's crucial, absolutely crucial that we have state intervention because a private developer is never going to produce an historic cultural quarter, 1916 cultural quarter, because that's, they're not, that's not their business. It should be the business of the state. And that's why the pressure should be placed on the state on whatever administration is in. But somebody has to make a decision to do this. It, ha it, it requires action. It, 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 it requires a minister who's prepared to say, uh, I, you know, this is the right thing to do and therefore it has to be done. It, it's interesting. Uh, I, um, I don't know that it had dawned on me as, uh, as clearly as you just stated it, that it, this is the last, I mean, this is a once, this is a one shot deal. If, if you can't redo it later. So if it doesn't happen now, uh, it's just lost to the sands of time. Dem demolition is very final. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's just a very, uh, I had not, uh, it had not hit me as hard as what you just said until now. So that is very, uh, that's very interesting. And I'm actually uh, really excited to go back. I, I want to, I want to see more street with a different perspective. So I want to go find the plaque and kind of see the, I want to actually spend time walking, uh, walking the route and kind of seeing what it is. Um, that, that to me just sounds uh, like a fascinating way to spend a, 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 an afternoon. Um, so what's next for you in this process? Like what, what are you looking at next? Well, you've rightly, you've right, rightly mentioned the, the events of yesterday where the Oireachtas, our parliament, voted to approve at least the Sinn Féin bill on the development of a, a company to oversee the development of the area as a 1916 historic, historical cultural quarter. Uh, we have to build on that. We have to build on that. The way to build on that is to continue campaigning with support from home and abroad um, so that there's no turning back, so that we, we keep moving forward with, with this project. Now we've gone, we've gone as far as we can really with a campaign in terms of the, we've produced the blueprint plan now at this stage for how the area could look. You know, we have architectural drawings, et cetera. Um, so short of building it ourselves, we've gone as far as we can in terms of here's the plan, just implement it. You know, it's, it, it, it's, it's a decision we need, you know, all the rest can be dealt with later, but we need a decision to be taken. No, this isn't to become a shopping mall type area. It is more significant and more important than that. And we must put on our conservation hat, our historical hat, and then have a look at the area and the great potential there is to create something really worthwhile and something that we'll be thanked for in the future by future generations for leaving that behind. Wow. Okay. Well, I got one question I ask everybody. Uh, this is just because I'm an avid reader and I, I, I love learning about things. So if you were on Moore Street and you bumped into somebody and they said, I want to learn more about anything, any subject matter, any topic, anything at all, what is the uh, album you encourage them to listen to, the book you say to read, uh, the podcast? You know, what, what is it that you steer them towards to learn more uh, just in general? Like... Uh, Oh, well, I, well, now, Jay, really, I'd have to say the writings of my great-grandfather. <laughs> that's, pre that's been prejudiced. Um, well, I mean, the in my time, in, 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 my, in my time, for instance, a book, a book called The Destruction of Dublin by Frank MacDonald was a book that greatly, ah. influenced, greatly influenced me. Um, it talked about how you can lose a city through private interests rather than taking care of the public interest. So that's a good read. But my, my, the book I'm reading at the moment, Jay, believe it or not, as I speak to you, is Fear by Bob Woodward. It's the Trump years of the White House. So uh, that's, that's a sobering read about democracy. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, I want you to know, I, I uh, ordered a copy yesterday of the words of James Connolly. Um, really? I, I did. I did. I ordered it yesterday, and uh, I, I'm hoping that I get it today. Uh, or at well, least congrat I'm, congratulations! <laughs> and, uh, well, I'm excited. I, you know, as a as a trade unionist, James Connolly is kind of one of the guys that we we look to a lot. So I'm very excited about 
uh, about getting more into those uh, into, into that book. Um, I, I will say thank you so much for taking the time to, to sit down with us. Um, this is something that I, I feel like is very pressing and uh, it kind of has an urgency to it. Um, so with that, I'm going to actually ask everybody right now, um, this is not just a simple watch to learn and enjoy. This is a call to action. Um, take five minutes, uh, write an email to uh, More Street Preservation Trust at gmail.com. Show your support there. You can contact the Irish Embassy in your area or a consulate in your area um, and, and let them know that this is something that we value, that we think has value for the future. Um, like we said earlier, like this is kind of it. It, it. You know, once it's gone, it's gone for good. And, and I think that that would be a terrible loss, um, not only to Ireland, but also to Irish America who uh, goes over to learn more about our roots and our history and those kinds of things. So right now, just take a couple of minutes uh, and send a quick email and say this is something that you want uh, looked at better, that the government needs to intervene and make sure that it is protected. Uh, it'll take you two minutes, but it has uh, years and years and years of impact. If you can do that. So uh, this is a call to action. I'm encouraging everybody to get on board with it. Share this video with friends and families. Let's pass it around. Uh, let's raise awareness on something that that uh, genuinely matters. Uh, and and uh, James, I I want to say thank you so much for for coming and talking. Uh, it, it's uh, it's just awesome that you you took the time to do that with us. I appreciate it. Not at all. Thank you for for the opportunity. And uh, a simple email, as you rightly say, might seem a simple thing to do from your point of view or from supporters' point of view, but for us, it's a very very valuable communication. Well, hopefully we will uh, we will get on that uh, right now and get people uh, to start sending some stuff in. Uh, and we'll please see, come we'll, back. We'll see you on Moor Street. And uh, oh, I'm looking. I'm I get my vaccination shot here pretty quick, man. I'm I'm ready to go. Uh, but I also uh, I want to say come back as this continues to to progress through. No and, problem. And no problem. I think uh, we would all love to learn more and, and make sure that we are all staying abreast of something uh, as important as this. Around. Um, Thanks for your support, Jay. Oh, happy to, happy to. Thank you for everything you are doing. Uh, it is just wonderful. Uh, and thank you all for tuning in. And uh, like I said, like send a quick email. It's going to take you less than a uh, couple of minutes to get done. But let's send an email. Let's get behind it. Let's save more streets and uh, um, save it for our kids and our grandkids who need to learn those kinds of lessons. Uh, until next time, thank you again so much for tuning in. Salon.